of the scripture. Psalm 66, verse 1 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Verse 5 says, Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. Now, that word terrible don't mean bad. That means awesome. And verse 8 says, O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Before you sit down, before you sit down and we give the text, when was the last time you shouted? When was, when was the last time you shouted? When, when, when was the last time you shouted? I double dog dare about 40 people in here to just shout out with a loud voice. I, I double dog dare you. I, I, da I bet you won't shout. I bet you won't praise God. I bet you won't tell him thank you. I bet you won't open up your mouth. I triple dog dare you to shout. You may have your seats in the presence of God. For the time that we share, I want to lift this subject. It's too noisy in here. It's too noisy in here. It's too noisy. And if you, if you don't like noise, I don't know where you're going when life is over because hell has gnashing of teeth and heaven has folks praising God and making noise forevermore. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Us as you may be seated when you all are ready, it's too noisy in here. It's too noisy in here. Most people grow suspicious of places that are too quiet. Most people grow suspicious of places that are too quiet. Because sometimes silence produces a scariness or an unsettling feeling. When you silent, many times you're wondering what's going on. A newborn who is not making sounds when they are born Nurse, nurses in here, they say they aren't breathing. And so they have to get, the doctors have to get them to making some sort of sound just to know that they're alive. They have to say something, they have to make a sound, make some noise just to know that they are alive. A child who's in your house that's normally active when they're not making noise, you wonder what they're doing. And so you go looking for them because silence really for most people is not normal. Most of our population needs some type of noise. They turn on their radios in the morning, the moment that they get up, because most of our society needs some type of noise. They turn on the TV even when it's time for them to go to bed because most of our society needs some type of noise. They drive in their car with a radio in the car but still have head buds in their ear because most folks need some type of noise when they are exercising and trying to bring sexy back there having some type of noise that's going on around them. Most people, even if you are a student, many times you will be blasting the radio while you're even trying to study because noise is normal to us. People need some type of noise. I mean, if they can't 
hear their noise. They will make some noise. So they will be walking through hallways singing, no matter how they sound, because people are accustomed to noise. Folks like noise until they come to church. And the moment they come to church, they feel that they need to be silent. They feel they need to be quiet. But all the week they've made noise, they've even caused noise. But how in the world would you go through your week noisy, but then come to church like a silent mouse? The best place I love to make noise is in church. I love to make some sound in church because even the book says that it is mentioned silent about 34 times. Silent is mentioned in the book about 34 times, but this same book, the Holy Writ, mentions noise 164 times. And most of that noise is unto the Lord. So when folks come to church and say you are too noisy, you can easily say this ain't for you, no way. Because I'm making this noise, as you saw in verse 1, unto the Lord. You make noise to identify that you're there. You make noise to identify that you are somewhere in a particular spot. Because if you're silent, sometimes folk can tend to look over you. But I love to make noise, especially when I'm getting on folks' nerves. I sure do. Sometimes I will go to church, and before I sit down, I will holler at the row. And if nobody holler back, I ain't sitting on that row, because that row is anti-noise. But when I come to church, I want to sit on the road with some noisy folks who know God been good to you, who know God brought you through. I'll holler at your row and see if you holler back at your boy. If you don't, I got to find some other place to sit. And you should do the same thing. If you come to church and you see a bunch of folks that's quiet, don't you sit there because sometimes quiet will hinder your praise. So I got to make some noise. I got to make this some noise. This psalm here is actually a noisy psalm. It's a psalm of thanksgiving, most likely as a response to people making it through the Passover. Did you hear me? This is a noisy song that is a response to people responding because they made it through the Passover. Do y'all remember what the Passover was? When the blood was on the doorpost, the death angel passed over. So these people in 66 Psalm said, I got to praise the Lord because he passed over me when I should have been dead. And the reason he passed over me is because the death angel saw the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Y'all be careful. I feel a preacher in me this morning. Is that flow that can make me white as snow? No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And since he passed you over, since death didn't come to your house last night, since the death angel passed over your post because he saw the blood, you are alive to make some noise. Anything dead ought to be buried, but if you're alive, some noise ought to come off of you somewhere. You ought to lift your hands at some point. You ought to clap your hands at some point. You ought to do your dance at some point. I came.
to make some noise. Well, that's the story. Here is the study. The reason why I came to make some noise, three, three things, I don't know how quick they're going to be, but three things I just need to share with you. The first reason why I came to make some noise is because of my story. Now, for some folk, I don't need to preach nothing else because you know how good God been to you. Enough say it. When folk look at you, they're looking at a miracle. When folk look at you, they're looking at somebody who's been changed. When folk look at you, they're looking at somebody who's been blessed. When folk look at you, they're looking at somebody who God performed a miracle for. So look at me. I'm a testimony. I didn't make it here on my own. I'm not standing here all alone. It was Jesus who gave me this opportunity. Look at me. I'm a testimony. And you can't have a testimony, baby, until you've been tested. Well, I've been tested. And I made it through. I've been tested. And so have you. I came. And it doesn't matter how you feel. You don't operate out of your EQ, your emotional quotient. You operate out of your IQ, your intelligence quotient. You know God been good to you. You know God brought you through. You know God opened doors that no man can shut. You know God let a window up and poured you out a blessing. You know that. And you got to get to the point where if nobody prays the praise God, you should. And you should never let nobody praise God more for you than you do. Ain't nobody going to get happier than me than me. I know God has blessed me. I know God has kept me. I know God has brought me out. I know God. When you think about how many times he healed you, some of y'all he healed and you didn't know you were sick. He kept you and you didn't even know it was him keeping you. The decision you made, the mistakes you've done, God kept you in all of that. That's a part of your story. The good he kept you. The bad, he kept you. When you was up, he kept you. When he was down, he kept you. That's your story. And just thinking about how some of y'all's stories shouldn't even be told. The trauma you've been through, the depression, the anxiety, the bad relationships, the damage that you've experienced. Some folk don't want to hear it, but if they don't want to hear it, don't worry about them. Just show up and tell it anyway. Don't you know such and such did this? Don't you know such and such did that? Let me tell y'all something right quick before I go to point number two. Sometimes you ought to agree with what the devil say about you. Yeah, the, the devil say you broke. Yeah, I'm broke. The devil say you're ugly. Well, that's what might, what you, might be what you think. But I'm going to take my ugly, broke self into the house that God gave me. I'm going to take my ugly, broke self into the car that God blessed me with. You right, devil. I was broke, but I still got a place to stay. You right, devil. I was out there, but God took me in, put me in church, and now I got to tell my story because some of your stories is your best sermon.
So I got to make some noise, number one, because of my story. I got to make some noise, number two, because of his glory. I, 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 listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me, okay, y'all? You see this pastor up here in this suit and these glasses and ain't got no hair on his head, but if it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd be crazy. Would none of y'all want me preaching to you all? If it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And Frosted Flakes, too, had it not been for the grace of God. I understand that God did not have to bless me in the way that he has. And since he has, my response to him is to make some noise. I appreciate everything God has done for me. Everything. This and that. Everything. I appreciate him. And so the grace of God is a result of the glory of God. The book says he reigns on the just just as well as the unjust. And I got a sneaky suspicion I ain't the only criminal in this church. I ain't the only liar in this church. I ain't the only backbiter in this church. I ain't the only hateful person in this church. But for the grace of God, I wouldn't even be here. But he looked beyond my faults. And he saw every one of my needs. He knew I wasn't going to stay in the ditch that I was in because of his goodness. I'm here, not in a ditch, but on a pulpit. Because of his glory. And so Psalm 84, 11 says, the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who try to walk uprightly. You ain't got to be perfect, but give it some effort. Just try sometime. Ask the Lord to help you to do better. Ask the Lord to help you to be better. You ain't got to be perfect, but you know you're in his hand. Some of you all, the worst thing you did was to push the little kid off the merry-go-round when you were four years old. The worst thing you did was mistakenly take the pen home from your job. That's the, and and I, I, I bless you, but that ain't my testimony. Some folk could have been dead because of me. Some folk could have been in the hospital because of me. Because my decision to make a certain decision could have ruined them. And the truth of the matter, I don't know how many people I possibly have ruined. You in church today, but the only reason you're in church and not in jail is because you didn't get caught. It's some more righteous folk in the pen than in some of these churches. But the glory of God, many times when the glory is on you, folks can't see the bad in you. They see the God in you. And some folks shout because they've sinned so much. But God forgave so much, so they got to praise so much. Everything I shout about ain't God's goodness. Sometimes I shout because he just gave me another chance when I blew it and said I wasn't going to do it. But he still brought me through it. 
You blew a lot of stuff God gave you. And he still blessed you. Now, I'm going to be honest. How I praise is personal. Why I praise is biblical. The results of my praise are miracles. When I run around this church, I, Lord showed me this years ago. The more I run, the faster I get to my blessing. So if nobody runs with me, you just don't know the blessing that's coming my way. And if you can't run, you should ask somebody to run for you. But he showed me that years ago. I, was, I took off at our home church in Atlanta, 7,500 seats in that church. Sitting on the second row, and that pastor said something about God's goodness. I took off, boom. And I saw people, look at him. Look at him running. Look. I said, you looking at me now, but wait, because I'm going to share something with you all. If you can't praise God when you're broke, it ain't going to be real when you healed. And so I ran till I got another job. I ran till I got out of debt. And then the guy who was looking and telling everybody to watch, say, look, he, he's supposed to be a doctor running. I supposed to be a doctor running. And I told him, I said, you see me running now, but you should have run too. Because at a point in life, I had to go back and lay my hands on him and pray for the same rascal that talked about me. And I said, you know why I can do this? Because I know that my blessings ain't based off of you. My blessings is based off of how good God been to me. And since God been good to me with your heart attack self, I could be a blessing to you. See, the trouble in life is which bridges to cross and which ones to burn. Since you never know, always be kind. You don't fight fire with fire. That's a lie. Most times you fight fire with water. And you want to get even, get even with some folks who've been good to you. You ain't just got to get even with folks who've been mean. So uh, 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 I got to make some noise. I got to make some noise because, number one, of my, my story. Num number two, because of his glory. Now, 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 dear hearts, noise is defined as a sound. It's defined as a sound that's usually loud. And somebody see it as unpleasant causing a disturbance noise and I'm, I'm gonna give it to you again is defined as a loud sound that someone sees as unpleasant and causing a disturbance don't you know when you get up and shout folk looking at you like there she go again There he go again. It don't take all of that. But baby, when you have been through what I've been through, you will tear this whole church up praising God. And so the book says, this ain't no regular noise. It say it's a joyful noise. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you down, you ought to make some noise because you will get some joy and he will turn that sadness upside down into gladness. 
Some of y'all don't need no psychiatrist. You don't need no psychologist. You don't need no therapist. You don't need no counselor. You need to shout. You need to make some noise. And so I learned in my 46 years of breathing and blinking, this Sunday before Thanksgiving, I learned that my story is because of his glory. And so first, for those of you who are see taking notes, we, 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 we make some noise because number one, because of our story. Number two, because of his glory. But the third and final reason we make noise is because it's mandatory. You ain't got a choice in the matter. You, this particular Psalm 66 is divided into two different sections. The first section is verses 1 through 12, where it's telling the people to come and praise. 1, one through 12 is telling who? The people to come and praise. See, you, 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 you most times predicate your praise on what somebody else is doing. So if the person next to me is praising, maybe I should. But verse 13 through 20 ain't about the people. It's personal. Let me tell you something. You think you have in church every time you go to some church on Sunday and praise is sang and the organ is gone and the synthesizer is playing. You think you have in church, but you ain't really had no church until you had church all by yourself. All alone, driving somewhere, sitting at a desk, about to check out at the store, and the Holy Ghost come and hit you, and you can't help yourself. You get a quickening in your spirit, and you shout hallelujah. You start singing your favorite song, doing your own dance. That's having church all by yourself. So the psalmist said to the people who was in the community, the folks, he says, I've been praising God with y'all first, but I got my own stuff. Verse five says for you to come and see what God has done for me. You all should be able to have a testimony based off of what God has done for you. You know why? Because the same thing he did for you may not be the same thing he did for me. And blessings are obedient. They know who to go to and when to get there. And so you may be shouting all over your new house. I may not have mine yet. My loan may even been denied. But God bless you with a new house. I'm going to praise God for what he blessed you with. Because I know if God bless my neighbor, he in the neighborhood. Sometimes you ought to see that house that you want to live in. And even if somebody living there. You ought to go up to that house and ring the doorbell. And when the current owner come out that house and say what you want, you just say, I'm just coming to look and see how well you taking care of the house that God about to give me. And then you get in your car and you drive away. And then I want you to do something. I want you to look through the side view mirror. Because when you look through the side view mirror after you left the house God going to give you, you look through the side mirror, there's a prophetic word right there. Because it says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. So you look and you prophetically say what I'm ready for is closer than I imagined. So I ain't going to wait till the battle is over. I'm going to shout right now.
How many of y'all been praying for something ain't happened yet? I dare you to shout right now. You're praying for something. It ain't came yet. Shout right now. Praise waiteth for thee, almighty God. I ain't going to praise you when I get it. I'm going to praise you before it comes. And I'm going to say this for the last time, Sister Shanta. Welcome back, Sister Levine. I'm going to say this for the last time. But Sister, Sister Bolton, I'm going to say this for the last time. Um, only use the fan when somebody's sweating. Don't use it when they're shouting. I, here's what I want you to do. If you're going to use the fan, go fan some of these folks who playing on their phone. Go fan some of these folks who talking too much. Go fan some of these folk who falling asleep. But don't you fan me when I got the Holy Ghost. I asked God to touch me. I asked him to set my soul on fire. And I wish the whole church will catch on fire. I wish the whole church will catch on fire. I wish this side will catch on fire. I wish the middle section will catch on fire. I wish this section will catch on fire. Thanking God for being good. Okay, sit down, sit down. One more thing, one more thing. One more thing, one more thing. This, this, this is Sunday service and this is Wednesday since you won't be here. I'm combining them all. All right, I'm combining them all. To, to, to read this entire psalm, you will see that the word selah is placed three different times in there. Now the word selah, we believe, means to pause. But selah just does not mean to pause. It also means to ponder, to think. And the third thing it means, not just to pause or to ponder, but it also means now, since you've paused, you stopped. Because sometimes God has to slow you down to show you where you really are. Don't you know you don't know you've been sleeping till you wake up? And so what he does is many times we think that the bad stuff that's happening to us is the devil. Sometimes it's God just saying, baby, slow down. You're doing too much. Your mind is moving. You can't even rest. You get eight hours of sleep and still wake up tired. Slow down. And when you slow down, you can then remember and think about how good I am to you. I, I was driving up to Walmart when I was developing this message earlier this week, and I pulled up to Walmart, the self-checkout thing, when they come and bring the stuff to your car. And while I was sitting there, I said, Lord, I said, Jesus, I thank you. And as I'm sitting there, I started crying. And I just said, Jesus, I thank you. Well, by this time, the, the, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm all messed up. I'm all messed up because the Lord gave me a chance to sit down, to pause, to ponder, and my response was then a praise. Don't, you, don't, don't go too quickly through this message right here. The 66th number of Psalm, it starts off with make a joyful noise. Is that in your Bible? Yes. What does it say? Make. I didn't hear this, this section here. What does it say? Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. That is four Hebrew words that translates to one Latin word. That Latin word for make a joyful noise is jubilate. Jubilate. Be 
Lot take what we get the word jubilant and jolly from. So it says to what? Make. Don't pause, pause, pause. pause. Because a lot of y'all may think you ain't got a reason. If you think you ain't got a reason, you ought to make one. And how many more reasons do you need to shout? As good as God has been to you already, you got enough stuff to shout through eternity. The fact that you can inhale and exhale, that's worthy of a shout. So this word jubilate means this. It means to shout and holler with everything that you got. It means to holler, to shout with everything that you got. Y'all, I don't know what kind of Holy folks, Holy Ghost some folk got. When the Holy Ghost hit me just right, I don't want to do nothing but eat and go to bed. So the book says, jubilate, to shout, to holler. To praise God with everything that you got. Jubilate. Shout. Shout. Holla. Make noise with everything that you got. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually jubilate. I got to praise him with everything that I got. My sweat gonna praise him. My lips gonna praise him. My hands gonna praise him. My esophagus gonna praise him. I bless the Lord with everything that I got. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Holla. Holla, will this side, holla, will this side, holla, will this side, holla, shout, 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 shout. I was sitting in my truck when the lady from Walmart came out and I couldn't help myself. I was shouting all in the front seat of the car and she paused and she looked and she's like, sir, are you okay? I said, you ain't got no idea. All I'm saying is Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. See, when I say Jesus, that's me asking him for something. When I say I thank you, that means he already answered. So in the morning, I say Jesus. When I go to work and make it back, I say thank you. When I pull out my card and I say Jesus, when the card go through, I say thank you. You ought to have a Jesus. I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Woke me up this morning. Blessed my family. Kept my kids. Gave me a place to live. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for how you brought me. Thank you. For how you told me, thank you, how you kept me, thank you, you never left me. Hey, hey, hey. shout, holla, holla, shout, holla, shout, holla, shout, shout, shout.
your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you waiting on? Why you sitting there? Like God ain't been good to you. What you waiting for? You got a reason. You got a right. You got a reason. You got a right. see what it looks like for a person that God been good to to dance all over his head come on up here if you're not ashamed to shout come on up here if you want the devil in hell to know you lose I'm alive and I'm gonna shout and tell God thank you sir I'm gonna shout and tell God the devil is mad, but I'm glad because he missed the soul he thought he had. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. If you sick, come on up. If you need deliverance, come on up. You about to praise your way through your situation. You coming out today. You coming out today. Depression is done. Sickness is done. My blood pressure is done. Come on and shout. Come on and shout. Come on and shout. Get you a partner. Jump if you can't dance. Get you a partner. Come on. Shout for your kids. Shout for your grandkids. <laughs> 